Okay, today's going to be Joe Biden's SCOTUS pick, Sherilyn Eiffel. I didn't include her in the top three in my previous video, and someone asked for it. As a matter of fact, that someone is T. Malice. T. Malice asked, why didn't you do Sherilyn Eiffel? So here she is. I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like it. And if you um, haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. It's not hard. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. So yeah, why haven't we talked about Cheryl and Eiffel? Now, the thing is, is she's not a judge. And people say, well, she's not a judge. She can't be a Supreme Court judge. Yes, she can. There's precedent for that. And I'm going to tell you about it right now. And of course, I wiki her. So Sherilyn Eiffel for SCOTUS. In 1962, Sherilyn Eiffel was born December 17th. So she's a Sagittarius and she's from Jamaica, Queens, uh, New York. Her father is a, is a Harlem social worker. Her father had immigrated to the U.S. from Barbados and her paternal uncle uh, was with him. Uh, her dad and his brother became African Methodist Episcopal ministers. Now in 1968 at six years old, uh, Sherilyn's mother passed away. Her mother was six years old, obviously. Sherilyn was six years old. She's the youngest, uh, Sherilyn is the youngest of 10 children and around 1980 uh, she would have graduated from high school. She has a bachelor's from Vassar College and a JD, Juris Doctor, uh, from New York University School of Law. So she is a lawyer. I don't know if she's passed the bar. Now while in law school, Sherilyn interned for a judge for the first summer and the second summer of the United Nations Center for Human Rights. And her first job out of law school was a one-year fellowship with the American Civil Liberties Union in New York. She then served as counsel, so she was a judge, I guess, at the Legal Defense Fund, founded by the Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall. And uh, is still there now as its president. And in 1993, she also joined the faculty of the University of Maryland Law School, where she taught for 20 years years. Now in 2016, her famous cousin, uh, with whom Sherilyn first immigrated from Barbados, uh, and that was journalist and anchor Gwen Eiffel of the late uh, PBS uh, NewsHour. The name of the show was the late PBS NewsHour. Now uh, Gwen died of breast cancer and endometri endometrial cancer at age 61. It was um, in 2016. Uh, now uh, Sherilyn Eiffel appears in the media for her expertise expertise in affirmative action, policing, judicial nominees, and the Supreme Court. And Sherilyn Eiffel is married to Evo Koblock and has three children. Now in 2021, Time Magazine named her one of the 100 most influential people in the world. And the conservatives may attempt to dismiss her lack of judicial experience, but as I said, similarly, Justices William Rehnquist, Earl Warren, and William O. Douglas were not judges prior to um, being U.S. Supreme Court justices. And so in 2022, she announced stepping down as president of that organization that uh, Thurgood uh, Marshall founded in 1940. That's coming up. So let's see what the cards tell us about Sherilyn Eiffel. So the Hermetic Tarot, based on the esoteric workings of the Secret Order of the Golden Dawn by Godfrey Dowson. These are U.S. game systems cards. And these cards are, I consider them kind of severe. They're a black and white deck, uh, and they, they're really loaded with symbolism. So for me, sometimes that can kind of get in the way. But uh, on the other hand, it gives you lots to uh, work with as far as dividing the cards. The uh, uh, little guidebook that comes with them is, um, you know, it's a little small. You can read them, but it gives you very useful interpretations of the cards. And if you're going to use these cards, I would say take some time to just read through this and know what you're talking about. Um, these cards, though, I mean, look at this. What happened here, the Golden Dawn would encourage their members to design cards that meant uh, something in particular to them. And so these are one of the... Uh, um, surviving uh, works, um, you can see that uh, if you're going to take them just at their face, they tell you how to read the cards. But if you're just going to take them for what a traditional Eight of Cups is, then you have clear symbolism if you look at it. But some of these can really take a minute for you to, uh, you know, interpret what all of the symbolism in here means. And there's everything in here. There's astrology, um, numerology. I mean, 
it, they're very thorough cards. Uh, I only use them uh, when I have kind of a severe subject or a person that I want to uh, read on. So I like to spread these out so that you get a chance to see what uh, different cards look like in case you don't collect cards or you don't get to see full decks of tar tarot cards all the time. I've got a ton of decks of tarot cards. I don't know. i got to get a rain on this, I think. But uh, the Hermetic Tarot are very interesting uh, cards to use. Okay, so this is going to be political. We're going to be talking about uh, Joe Biden's SCOTUS potential pick, Sherilyn uh, Eiffel. So Sherilyn Eiffel is a very interesting uh, person. Now she, some would say that she's never been a judge. So how can she be a judge uh, at, at the Supreme Court level? But we've had three examples of very good Supreme Court justices uh, in the past who indeed were never judges before they became a confirmed Supreme Court justices. So, but before we do that, let's have just a moment of meditation. That's all it takes. Okay, so Sherilyn Eiffel. Sherilyn Eiffel. I think what we'll do is probably two questions where there are three cards each, and then one final question with probably six cards. So Sherilyn Eiffel, Sherilyn Eiffel, Sherilyn Eiffel. Sister of Gwen Eiffel. And let's see what the cards can tell us. I think the first thing I want to ask is, is Sherilyn Eiffel According to the universe, is Sherilyn Eiffel qualified to be a Supreme Court Justice? Three cards. One, two, three. Is Sherilyn Eiffel qualified to be a Supreme Court Justice? Just three cards. Okay, the first card out of the rack is the Eight of Cups. So this is interesting. The Eight of Cups is typically uh, walking away from something of important emotional uh, significance to you. And indeed, uh, this card uh, is called in this deck, the Lord of Abandoned Success. Abandoned Success. This brings to mind having to walk away from something that's important to you. Now, my question is, is she qualified? Uh, so let's leave that for a moment, because it makes me think right away that um, uh, she would have to, she, she wouldn't get the Supreme Court uh, nomination, which I think she would want. That's not the question I asked. Is she qualified? Next card is going to be this Four of Swords. And the Four of Swords is having to, it's typically depicted in the right away deck. You may remember as a, 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 a knight uh, laying down on a sarcophagus with three swords above him and one sword at his side. Now, this is called the Lord of Rest from Strife. The Lord of Rest from Strife. It makes me think of Sherilyn Eiffel, and it's interesting that it's a center card, because in fact she has um, given her notice as uh, for the, the day job that she has now. And so, uh, as per the little piece that I talked about before we started, so the Lord of the Rest of... So she's taking a break from that, and that is in fact walking away from something that was of big emotional importance to her. So what are the cards talking about? So she, she gave her notice for that job, so that would uh, qualify this card, the Eight of Cups, uh, walking away from something of emotional importance. It would also qualify for this card, which is the Four of Swords, which is Rest from Strife. So abandon success and rest from strife. She did leave that job very successful, and she does seem to be taking a break. The last card is whether she is qualified, okay, is the Hierophant, and this is government. Wow. So this is the uh, Magus of the Eternal Gods, the, the Magician of the Eternal Gods. And the fact that this is the Hierophant just speaks to me, it's directly related to government. So you know, it's just such a strong connection to that question. I would say that, yes, she is uh, qualified for the job. And I wonder if she hasn't set herself up for that, as a matter of fact. Very interesting. Uh, Eight of Cups. Oh, my uh, tablet went off. Let me see if I can get it back on because I've got all my questions here. And I'll be lost without it. So the Eight of Cups walking away from some, uh, something of emotional importance, which she did. Uh, rest from the Lord of Strife. The rest from Strife, which she's doing. And then the Hierophant, which seems to be the end game. No, huh. I think this not only says that she's qualified, maybe she will be. Huh, interesting. The uh, next 
question. I was going to ask if she will be um, chosen, but let's see. Is is Joe Biden seriously considering her? And since I'm changing from her energy to Joe, let's do this. Let's clear the cards for a minute. Is Joe Biden seriously considering Sherilyn Eiffel as one of the, uh, well, this card is backwards, as one of the persons he will uh, nominate? Is Joe Biden considering uh, Sherilyn Eiffel as one of the candidates that he might uh, put up for nomination? Is Sherilyn Eiffel uh, one of Joe Biden's uh, picks? As a matter of fact, Sherilyn Eiffel, three cards. Is she one of Joe Biden's picks? One, two, Three. Okay. Is Sharon Eiffel one of Joe Biden's possibilities? First card up is the Ten of Wands. And um, the Ten of Wands is a heavy, hard burden to carry. And it's card here, the Lord of Oppression. So um, that could speak to the fact that maybe uh, the fact she hasn't been a judge might be um, something that um, could block her nomination. Uh, the second card up for that is Joe Biden considering her is the star card. And uh, this is the, the this card is labeled in this deck as the daughter of firmament. So as the star card, I would say, yeah, I would say that she is certainly shining bright in his options. And then the last uh, card for this is the devil card. And this is, um, you know, kind of being chained to ill intentions. And this is called in this deck, the Lord of the Gates of Matter. And what comes to mind right away is that she has been such a loud um, proponent of, uh, of rights uh, for people that that may be considered something, the specific rights that she has defended may be something that uh, could uh, be considered as a, uh, a roadblock for her. It is the last card, but it is the devil, and that's a strong card. So I think if she wanted Joe Biden's picks, We've got uh, the first card being, it's a Ten of Wands. It's a heavy, heavy load to get up the hill. The middle card being the star, saying, yeah, she certainly is shining out as a choice. But then the last card with the devil, I think this is uh, speaks to uh, what some of the causes she's fought for and how that might be used to block her nomination. So I think, yeah, he's, she's being considered, uh, and those are some of the issues that are being considered along with her. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to ask, will Sherilyn Eiffel in six cards, Sherilyn Eiffel. So we're going back to Sherilyn Eiffel. Sherilyn Eiffel. Sherilyn Eiffel. Will she be nominated? Not will she get the job. Will she be nominated? Six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Will Sherilyn Eiffel be nominated for that SCOTUS job? Okay. The signifier card for this question, will Sherilyn Eiffel be nominated for this job? Right out of the pack, we get the Eight of Wands. And the Eight of Wands is a lot of issues coming at you at the same time. And this is called the Lord of Swiftness. So, um... Wands are actions or plans or move, forward move, motion, but uh, there also uh, can be obstacles. And so the Lord of Swiftness, this is typically depicted in the Rider Waite decks as a bunch of wands uh, coming down out of the sky towards uh, the ground. So the signifier card is that there are a lot of issues, okay? Uh, the challenge to that is the Hangman. And this, this deck, this is called the Spirit of the Mighty waters. That's interesting. I don't quite know how to interpret that, but the hangman does speak to, and it is the major arcana, and this is number 11 of the major arcana. So this does speak to, uh, in that journey, a point where you have to look at things from another perspective. So the fact that there's all these issues is challenged by looking at things from another perspective. Will the issues that come with Cheryl Eiffel be a challenge to looking at those things from a different perspective? The base of this reading then, will she be nominated? Will she be nominated? Is the Queen of Pentacles. So the Queen of Pentacles, and here's called the Queen of the Thrones of Earth. So the Queen of Pentacles represents, you know, Pentacles are value or worth. They can be money, but I think in this case we're really talking about value. And uh, it, at the base of this reading is the Queen of Pentacles. She is the subject of the uh, question. So I think she is the base of the reading. She is the Queen of Pentacles. She does have, you know, a queenly amount of value towards this uh, end. The past of this reading then, ah, 
is the blasted tower, the Lord of the hosts of the mighty. So the tower card typically signifies, you know, a huge interruption, almost an end to something, but certainly stopping in its tracks and having to deal with the uh, debris from that. So that's where we are with the tower card. Now in the sky of this reading, we have death. Oh boy. So this is the end of a cycle. Um, and my question was clearly, is she going to be nominated? And the end of a cycle is up here in the sky. So that doesn't look good. And then the final outcome for this, will Sherilyn be nominated, is the King of Cups and the Prince of the Chariot of Waters. So it's interesting that with the King of Cups, the king is the compassionate uh, leader. So I think this is speaking to Joe Biden. So let's look at it again with with all of that in mind okay so will she be nominated we get into that there's a lot of issues there and the challenge to those issues are looking at those issues from another perspective and the base of the reading is the queen of pentacles which is sherilyn herself the past of this reading is the blasted tower which is having to recover from you know a lot of uh, uh disruption uh, the sky of this reading is death which is the end of a cycle to me and the final outcome is the compassionate king which for me is joe biden i don't know this just says to me all the elements are here joe biden's here she's here uh, her past is here, and I think she's not going to be she's not going to be up for nomination. So, Sherilyn Eiffel, that's what the cards say. All I do is just read the information that comes out, and let me know what you think uh, about it. Is she a good candidate? Well, I'm Mark. This has been my journey through tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go. So, stop on by. Ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.